All right, guys, so as you know by now, I'm a big believer that video games hold the answers to every problem in life. And today that is not any different because today I will be talking about self-sabotaging behavior, why it happens and how you can overcome this. And of course, I couldn't have explained it better with any other game than our favorite game from quarantine, Among Us. So let's not wait any longer and let's get right into it. So first of all, let's start out by taking a look at the ship. Because what we can see when we play Among Us is that the ship is like the map of the game. And it's also like the place where all the action seems to happen during the game. And in this video and in real life, the ship actually symbolizes your life. Because what we can see is that life sometimes can be very messy and disorganized. Just like the ship in Among Us can be. And because we want to accomplish all these great things in our life and we want to improve ourselves and become successful, for example, you're going to need someone to run this ship. And fortunately for you, there are some people who are willing to help you out here, which are, of course, the crewmates. Because what we see in the game is that the crewmates are basically like the good guys. They make sure that the ship keeps running by doing all these things like tasks and they always help each other out with the tasks and stuff like that. And they basically just want what's best for the ship and just win. And in real life, that is of course the same because you want to win in real life too. So that's why the crewmates, they symbolize the parts of you that help you accomplish that, which are things like ambition, enthusiasm and courage and all these other positive traits that you have. And an important difference to note here is that in Among Us, you are of course only one of the crewmates, but in real life, you are all of them. Because like I just said, they symbolize all the good traits and all the good parts of you. And in order to win this game, you have to do these things called tasks. Because what we can see in Among Us is that there are all these kinds of different tasks that you need to do, like fixing wires, downloading and uploading files and destroying meteorites and stuff like that. And once you do every single one of your tasks, then eventually the taskbar will be full and then you win the game. And in real life, that is of course also the same. Because as a self-improver, if you want to win in life, you got to do all these good things as well. Which are things like going to the gym, meditation, taking cold showers, reading, journaling, etc. So the tasks in this case, they symbolize all the like good self-improvement habits that you do during your life. But unfortunately for you, there aren't just crewmates on your ship, but there's also this little fella over here, which is called the imposter. So what we can see in Among Us is that the imposter is of course like the bad guy of the game. Because the imposter only has one goal and one mission, and that is to make sure that your crewmates aren't doing the task that they are supposed to do by sabotaging their progress or killing off the crewmates. And in your life, you also seem to have this little imposter inside of you. Because unlike all the positive traits I just talked about, like ambition and creativity, you also have these negative traits inside of you, which are things like fear, overthinking, and doubt. And these are, of course, the traits that prevent you from making the progress in your life which you want to make. So it's important to note here that the imposter is not anyone else trying to mess up your progress but it's just as much a part of you as the crewmates are. And that's because self-sabotaging behavior, like you can hear it in the term self-sabotaging, it's an inner conflict. It's something that's completely part of yourself. That's also why the imposter, it looks just like your crewmates. And that's also why it is so hard to deal with this problem, because it's very hard to recognize it, because it's just a part of you. So before we move on, it's important for you to remember here that self-sabotaging behavior is an internal battle and there's no one preventing you from moving forward in your life except for yourself. Now as the imposter, there are of course a couple of different ways to mess with the crewmates. And the first one being sabotaging. Because what we can see when we play the game is that the imposter can do things like causing a reactor meltdown or turning off the lights or depleting oxygen or shutting off doors and all kinds of other things. And when this happens, the crewmates are of course forced to take action on this because they have to drop their tasks and make sure that the thing that the imposter sabotaged is fixed first because otherwise they won't be able to continue in the game. And in your own life, we can see that your own inner imposter is doing the same thing because whenever you try to do your good habits like taking a cold shower or going to the gym or working hard on a project for example, there's always this like voice inside of your head 
which is like giving you feelings of anxiety or fear or doubt and stuff like that and cause you to procrastinate on doing your tasks to make sure that you aren't making the progress that you want to make. And what I just told you about the crewmates having to respond immediately to like the sabotaging behavior of the imposter or else they like lose the game, that goes in real life as well. Because what we can see is that when we get these feelings of fear and doubt and anxiety and we start to procrastinate, we have to do something about it immediately as well. Because or else it will completely consume us and it will co keep us completely paralyzed and we're unable to do anything else in our life anymore. So it's important to note here that whenever something like this happens in your life, it's important to always take action on it immediately. Because if you don't do this, what will happen next is that the imposter will move on to the next phase and that is to kill off the crewmates. Because what you have to understand is that as an imposter in Among Us, they are always in the minority, whether there's like one imposter or two imposters. And in order for them to win the game, they need to be in the majority. Because once they are in the majority, then they can gain full control over the ship and then they win the game. And in real life, once again, we can see this as well. Because in your own life, whenever you sabotage yourself, whenever your inner imposter is killing off your inner crewmates, what we can see is that slowly but surely, it's starting to take more and more control over your life. And over time, it will become harder and harder in order to still be productive and do anything meaningful in your life. So when it comes to killing, whether that's like killing in Among Us or sabotaging yourself in real life, you can see this as like a final warning for you to get your act together and make sure that you won't ruin your life completely. So now that we know what the roles are and how they exactly work, it's time to come up with a plan to prevent the imposter from just running around and killing off all your crewmates. And the first step to do this is by making sure that whenever you find a dead body, you use the game's report function. Because what we can see in the game is that whenever we find a dead body and we report the dead body, the game pauses for a second and you enter this meeting and because of it, the imposter, it can't do any further harm because the kill counter will reset and stuff like that and basically allows you to just pause for a second and make sure that no further harm is going to happen. And in your life, it's important to do the same here because reporting a dead body in this case symbolizes things like acknowledgement and reflection. Because what we can see in our own lives is that sometimes whenever we sabotage ourselves, we usually just brush it off like nothing happens. Like, oh, I just had a bad day or I just had a bad moment. Then we just continue with our tasks. We don't want to waste any more time or thoughts on it. So then we just continue, but then over time, the imposter is still there inside of you and it can still run around freely and kill off even more crewmates. And then you start to mess up more often and then eventually you lose the game. But by reporting the body and by acknowledging that you are sabotaging yourself and by reflecting on your behavior, what's gonna happen is that you give yourself some time to pause for a second, just like in the game, and you can come up with a strategy to prevent this from happening again. So you're basically gonna ask yourself, how do I solve this? And then this is where the fun starts, guys. Because once you aren't in denial anymore and you acknowledge that you are indeed self-sabotaging and that you need to do something about it, it's time to catch the imposter red-handed. And in order to do that, there are a couple of tools which you can use, which are things like the admin table and the security cameras. Because what we can see when we play Among Us is that we can use these tools as a way to like monitor the ship. So like see what is going on, see what all the crewmates and the imposters of course are up to and see if we can notice any like strange behavior going on in the ship. And in this video and in your own life, you can use a very similar tactic because these things, they symbolize things like meditation and observation. Because what you have to understand is that when it comes to solving your self-sabotaging behavior, you gotta create self-awareness. That's what these two things allow you to do. Because once you have self-awareness, you are able to look at your life from like a third person point of view and therefore you are able to notice like any strange behavioral patterns that are going on in your life. So what that means is that whenever you are sabotaging yourself, you will notice it immediately once you are self-aware enough. And then you are able to catch the imposter red-handed, just like you are able to catch him in Among Us. So then if you do notice any strange behavior on the ship, that is when you start calling in an emergency meeting. 
Because what we can see when we play the game is that emergency meetings are called whenever crewmates notice like any strange behavior going on on the ship. And when it comes to real life, we can see that this once again works exactly the same. Because the emergency meetings here, they symbolize things like intervention and being proactive. Because what you have to understand is that there are two types of meetings in the game. The first one is the one I talked about before. It's like whenever you find a dead body and you report the body and then you enter the meeting and you reflect on what happened. But then there's also these emergency meetings and these are more of like a preventive measure. Because finding a dead body, you're already too late. You're just reacting to whatever happened. And in this case, you want to make sure that the killing doesn't happen. You want to prevent it from happening. So if, for example, you arrive at a point where you usually sabotage yourself, like whenever you are working on a project or something, because you notice this like voice inside of your head that's giving you excuses to procrastinate and just distract yourself, that's the time where you call in an emergency meeting in your own life by just pausing for a second and noticing what happens and therefore preventing the sabotaging from taking place. But at this stage, the problem is of course not solved yet, because what we can see when we call an emergency meeting is that we are proactive and we prevent the imposter from sabotaging even further. But in order to fix the problem permanently, we have to vote the imposter out. And in order to do that, we have to make sure that a majority of the members on the ship agrees on who the imposter is. And most of the times, these meetings, they can be very messy. Because what can happen, for example, is that Red, the crewmate, might say something like, Black is sus. And then Black, who is the imposter, might defend himself by saying something like, Red is sus. So then Red might respond to that by saying something like, I saw Black vent. But then Black might once again defend himself by saying things like, Red is lying. It's probably a self-report. So then overall, this can just lead to very annoying and confusing situations where the crewmates don't really know who to vote on. And then what might happen is that they just skip votes because they don't know for sure who the imposter is. So then the game continues and the killing can go on. Or they vote off the wrong person. So they vote off a crewmate and then the imposter get like even more of an advantage during the game. And when it comes to self-sabotaging behavior in real life, we can see that these discussions that we sometimes have in our own head, they can be a very big hassle as well. Because sometimes what the imposter is telling you may sound very convincing. Like I can't count the amount of times whenever I was like working on a project and I had this thought inside of my head of just procrastinating and doing something else by distracting myself. And these excuses, they always sound like very convincing at the time. So sometimes I have voted off like a crewmate on my own ship and therefore the imposter started to get more of a hold on me. So even if you do have a lot of self-awareness, like I just told you, is like very important can still be very tricky because both the crewmates and the imposter might have very good arguments for their respective behavior. So in order to fix this problem, I feel like we need to introduce a new role here, which is in this case, the mediator. Because like I just explained to you, the reason why self-sabotaging behavior happens and why it's so hard to solve it is because there's this inner conflict inside of your head. Because both your crewmates and the imposter you can't seem to agree with each other. And therefore you live this very unbalanced life where sometimes things are going very well and then things are not going very well. So the mediator in this case, it serves as like a neutral point of view. It looks at like both parties with a lot of compassion and objectivity in order to make sure that both your crewmates and the imposter can be on the same side. Because as a self-improver who's very ambitious and wants to accomplish a lot of great things in his life, it's very easy to just start finger pointing to the imposter and say like, hey, you are the cause for all of the troubles in my life, so you need to be gone. But then what happens, of course, is that the imposter, he will just relentlessly try and defend himself and make up for his own behavior and start to sabotage you even more and start to scream even louder at you because you are simply not willing to listen to him. But if you are actually able to listen to the imposter and see what he has to offer and see why he's doing the things that he's doing in your life, then maybe you can figure out a solution together. I still remember when I just started out with my YouTube channel, I had a lot of ambition and motivation to get this working because I really wanted to become like an entrepreneur and like escape the nine to five rat race and just become very rich and wealthy. But then there was always this voice in the back of my mind who was telling me like, 
oh, copy, you shouldn't do this because being an entrepreneur is very risky because you don't have a stable income and it will cause you a lot of stress. And therefore, it sabotaged my progress in my YouTube channel by causing me to procrastinate on making videos and stuff like that. And at the beginning, what I always did is just brush this off and say like, hey, you need to be silent. You just need to let me work on this channel. But then over time, as I started to learn more about how self-sabotaging behavior works, then I started to look at it with more compassion and objectivity. And then I started to actually listen to that voice and realize like, hey, maybe that voice actually got a point. Maybe becoming an entrepreneur is actually stressful. Then I was like, I was able to mediate between those two parts in my head. And then what happened is actually very interesting because as I started to listen more and more to the imposter inside of my head, what happened is that he started to feel more hurt and understood and therefore he didn't feel the need anymore to sabotage my progress. So instead of just ignoring the imposter or calling him names, like saying things like black is sus, like you would do in the game, try and listen to him instead and remind yourself that both of you, both the crewmates and the imposter have the best interest with you and you need to make sure that you're both on the same team. And that brings us to the last part and last phase of this video, which is the ejection phase. Because what we can see in the game is that whenever we have correctly identified the imposter and the majority of like the crewmates inside of us agree on who the imposter is and to let him go, we are able to vote him out, and then eventually win the game. And in real life, we can see this going on as well, of course, because once we have correctly identified the imposter inside of our own head, and we started to listen to it, like I just explained to you, by being a mediator, then we can also let go of it in real life. So bringing back the example of me and my YouTube channel, what I did is that I started talking to like the imposter in my head, and I told him like, hey, I know that you're worried about me, and I know that you don't want me to become an entrepreneur, because that will cause me a lot of stress, but you don't have to worry about it. Because all I'm going to do is just continue with this YouTube channel and I'm only going to quit my 9 to 5 when it's safe and secure to do so. So whenever I earn a good amount of money, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Then the imposter, once again, it felt understood and then I could let him go. I was like, hey, you don't have to make sure that I procrastinate anymore. You don't have to give me all these negative emotions inside of me anymore. You can just leave me be and trust me. And once you do it like that, you are able to say goodbye to all of these harmful habits in your life because you are able to let go of the imposter. And then just like how you win the game in Among Us, you are able to be victorious in real life as well. And that brings us to the end of the video, guys. I really enjoyed making this video because I find this topic very interesting to talk about and explaining it to you with Among Us also brought back a lot of great memories back from when we had quarantine. So. I hope you pulled a valuable lesson from this one, but if you are intrigued to learn more about this, I will link a book in the description down below, which is called The Mountain Is You by Brianna Wiest, because this is the book that gave me all the knowledge that helped me to create this video. It's also what inspired me to start diving deeper into this concept. So if you're interested in reading that one, I will put a link in the description down below. And as always, remember that the motivation that you feel right now won't always be there. So if you want this advice to truly help you and change your life, you need to stop watching YouTube, don't click on another video, but take action on it right now. Stop thinking, start doing. Take care.